All right, everybody. Well, you wouldn't know it by how gorgeous the weather is, but uh, it's gonna be some really bad storms this afternoon. It's about, uh, I don't know, like one o'clock. And this morning was rainy and windy and nasty. This afternoon's gonna be really bad. Some severe storms coming in, but I figured I got a couple hours, might as well get out here and uh, do some social distancing. Uh, I'm gonna use this opportunity to go see if I can't catch some fish before the storm comes. Hopefully they'll bite pretty well, like they usually do when a front's coming in like this, and uh, we'll see what happens. So stick with us, stay tuned. Hopefully we catch biggins. Hey, it's working now. <laughs> Funny. Let's go. I used to be good at it. Oh, it oh, did hit it. It was a fish. It jacked my bait all up. What a jerk. People are out just driving their boats and zigzags and goofing off. There he is. Yeah, the old spotted bass. And he ate it too. I am videoing it. You're on the video with me right now. No, it's both. Good little fish to start the day. Around the end of that dock. Oh my goodness, that's a big one. Oh, he's not that big. He's a good one, though. On the spinner bait. Oh, crap, look at that one. <laughs> that's what we're talking about right there. Yep. GoPro got the whole thing. That's the way you want him to eat it, too. Look at that. That's a good one. He's like, well, let's find out how much he is. He's probably only two and a quarter. He got a little overexcited because he's got such a big head, but he's probably only two and a quarter. Let's see. Two six zero. Two six zero. So he's actually over two and a half. Well, thanks for playing, homie. Oh, he's gonna jump. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. It's a good fish. He freaking just smoked that spinnerbait. Oh. And I called you right back? Perfect. Well, you didn't miss anything. There's another one. He's not big though. I watched him eat it and that was the coolest freaking thing ever. God, look at how they're eating this thing. Look at that. Little 14 incher Oklahoma keeper. 
We'll keep in Arkansas, though. Bites like that are why you put forth the effort to uh, customize your spinner baits. I'm gonna put these other rods up. I don't think I need them. another one. Man, they're just eating that spinnerbait. Another one. You're having a good day when you got one rod on the deck. short pockets like this are awesome so first thing in the spring a lot of times these short pockets off the main lake will be the first spot that big fish pull up to so I don't know why I don't fish them more often but I haven't been and uh, maybe that'll end up working out because down that creek arm I was in the, all the short pockets off of it's where we caught fish so Another keeper. Uh, pretty good one. Another keeper. Fat. Look at that. Probably a young female. Good one. Another, oh, I see that one. Look at that fish right there. I watched that fish 
sitting there. Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. Hey, good job, buddy. He was sitting on top of that log. I could see him sitting there when I rode it by the first time. He swatted at it. Look how he's got like a little stubby tail. Look at that. But anyway. Dude, stop it. Thank you. Another one. I'd say we're having a pretty good day. I don't have anything for weight, but I like catching fish, so that's fine. starting to rain so I'm gonna go ahead and put this rascal up and I'll recap the house all right well as you can see we're back at the house and as you can probably hear it is pouring down rain I wanted to actually take this time to go over the equipment that I was using today um, do that after every one of my videos in case anybody's curious but I just wanted to kind of cover what uh, the fish were actually hitting today so I caught almost all of my fish on this double willow leaf war eagle spinnerbait so when i bought this war eagle spinnerbait it was a double colorado but i liked the head and the skirt and it was on sale so i bought it and turned it into a double willow leaf looks like any other spinnerbait well i actually do a couple mods i'm going to share with you that i think help me get more bites so first i put a number five copper willow leaf spinnerbait blade on the back and then up here, I swapped out my Colorado for this number four gold willow leaf. Now, golden copper are two of my favorite springtime spinnerbait blade colors and one of my favorite combinations of all time. I think it really works well in overcast days, and I think it works phenomenally in dirty water. And it just so happened I had both of those today, so it was a perfect storm. This is a half ounce. It is one of the painted ones. I don't think that matters, but a little bit of red probably helps a little bit. It's chartreuse and white, as you can see. And I am throwing a diesel minnows uh, Z-Man, like a Aztec trailer. That sucker, when it's glued on there like I do, 
it takes an act of God to get it off. So in my opinion, I want to keep throwing a bait. I don't want to stop after a place trailer. So I use that Elastec, has great action. It gives them something good to bite and I don't have to replace it throughout the day. So to how I made this special, what I'll do is show you this other spinner bait. I have not done anything special with. So you see how that blade is sitting directly over the hook. The end of that line lines up with the tip of that hook. So the spinner bait arm, in my opinion, is a little bit too long and I'll end up having to trim that up. So what I do is, as you can see here, in the same angle, hook point, nothing guarding it. So what I do is I actually trim the end of my arm down a little bit. I do it for two reasons. Number one, I think that when a fish bites it, and as you'll see in the video, a lot of them had it deep. When a fish bites it, they don't hit that arm and you just get a better hookup. The ones that were willing to commit to it, I wouldn't have needed a trailer hook. I barely was able to get my hand in there to get the hook out. They ate it. And I truly think that this being as short as it is helps me with that. So I trim it up for that reason, but I also trim it up because it does stiffen it just a little bit. Yeah, I know some people say that it makes the wire a little bit stiffer, so your vibration is different. As you see today, the fish didn't care. They bit it. What it does is it keeps that bait from rolling over as easily. It makes it nice and stiff. It deflects off the cover very easily. It makes it a more compact spinner bait that can put it in tight places easier. And it ultimately just makes it a better brush fishing spinner bait in my opinion. So this, I trim for brush and for bites. So that right there, half ounce, chartreuse and white is what I caught almost all of my fish on. I am throwing that on a PAL diesel seven foot two medium heavy action rod. I've coupled that with this six four to one Bass Pro Pro Qualifier reel, and I'm throwing it on a 20 pound copolymer line. Now, I did catch one fish right away on a chatterbait, and I can guarantee you if I was fishing docks, which I did get bit doing, if I chose to fish the dock pattern, I would have caught a lot more fish on that chatterbait because it was a very chatterbaity type day. So this one, I put a custom skirt on. It's just a Z-Man Elite Chatterbait. I put this custom um, blue shad skirt with a little bit of chartreuse on there. I like that chartreuse in the spring. I don't know if it matters, but I personally like it. Another Elaztec Diesel Minnows trailer. Uh, for the same reason, I don't want to have to continuously put on a new trailer. This is a great skipping trailer because it doesn't tear up. You put some glue on the head of that thing and it'll stay there all day. It has great action and it skips very well. I personally, in the springtime, like throwing the gold. I know a lot of people throw black blades and whatnot, but I don't know why. I like the gold blade. I'm fishing in the Ozarks. If I'm fishing grass, I'm throwing a different color anyway. It'll have a black blade, but a shad imitation bait, I'm throwing that gold. And this specifically is my dock skipping chatterbait. This is set up, it's a uh, St. Croix Mojo bass rod. I'm throwing it on 17 pound copolymer line. I'm throwing that with a Revo X 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. That 7 3 to 1 ratio is the perfect amount to get that fish coming your way. It's not overpowering like an 8 3 to 1 where you might accidentally overwork your bait but it is fast enough to where when a fish is coming at me or when I need to turn him, I have the power and I have the speed to do so. So I throw that seven three to one, <laughs> excuse me. I throw that seven three to one for that reason. So that's really the breakdown of what I did today. I only had a couple hours fish. I picked up two rods and I caught fish on two rods. You might see I had several rods out on the deck, but I only threw these two rods. It was very apparent very quickly that it was gonna be a spinner bait or a chatterbait type of day. And me, man, my heart's with a spinnerbait every time. So of course, I stuck with that. Take those tips that I gave you and apply them to your scenario and maybe it'll help you catch more fish. I am a true believer in it. I don't put forth extra effort on something that I don't think is going to work. And I do that with every one of my spinnerbaits that I fish around brush. My hookup ratio truly increases after I do that. So get out there, stay safe, catch bass, and we'll